Well, an exciting 24 hours it's been in Blue Jays' world. How about it starting with a Jeremy Beasley promotion? That's my guy. I've been saying it for weeks. Finally, they start listening to me, Ben. Uh, And, hey, the winds keep on rolling. We're going to give you our game recap, a little MVP, some storylines from the most recent series against the White Sox, and another prospect roundup, Benjamin. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Plus, if you've been a longtime listener, 20 games ago, we kind of marked this stretch here in May when the Jays were really scuffling to see how well would the Jays do over that stretch. Well, we have the results for you, and they're pretty interesting. It's all on Locked On Blue Jays, and it's right now. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. For the audio listeners, which are the grand majority of you, I'm Matt Bonaparte with Ben Shulman. If you're on YouTube, we love and appreciate you. If you're not on YouTube, please go subscribe to our YouTube. We have a measly 21 subscribers right now. All the other Locked On podcasts are looking at us being like, those guys only have 21 subscribers. Yeah. We got to show them we have a bigger community. Than yeah. That, right. Because we, we do. We're just new. We're just new. We need we're them just to. New. You guys got to go out there and get show the them. Pump going. We're, we're pretty. You might want to look at us, not just listen <laughs> to us, you know. That's a huge endorsement from Ben. Thank um, you. This series was also incredibly pretty for the Blue Jays. The win streak continues. Uh, the Jays now have 29 wins on the season, 29 and 0. 30 wins on the season, 30 and 20. I almost said, I just said 29 and 0. I meant 29 and 20. Yeah, you meant it's 30. 30 wins on the season. Well, I'm just losing my mind. That's 30 okay. and 20 on the year. Uh, so the Jays are, I mean, they're just doing everything we'd like them to do, Benjamin. Uh, and over the last series against the White Sox, they kind of the hitting, you know, the hitting was the story of the Angels series. It was like, wow, the bats are back. And then the White Sox series was like, yeah, they're back. Um, so give me your storyline, Ben. What was what, what did you follow along uh, in this series? The non one run wins were kind of the biggest storyline for me. And look, they they still got them in interesting ways. You go into the bottom of the eighth inning of this final game against the White Sox, only up one, but you score four runs. And because of it, Trent Thornton closes the game instead of Jordan Romano, who you do have to get warmed up, but you still save his arm a little bit, at least by not having to put him in. The non-one-run wins two days in a row really signaled to me that this team is back because the first five wins, or sorry, five of the first six wins of the win streak came by one run. And it was like, all right, well, Yeah, they were losing a lot of one-run games after winning a lot early, so now it's swinging back. But if they can continue to do this, win 8-3 in the finale, 7-3 in the second game of the series, that's how you build a sustainable winning team for the future because they're not taxing the bullpen. And, you know, it'll help out later in the year when maybe they want to pull a couple extra guys. They're not doing that a ton right now because they're a little bit thin uh, with George Springer still out with that non-COVID illness. But it's just it's a much better product to watch when the Jays are convincingly beating teams rather than just eking out every single win. Yeah, and that's a testament to the bats, of course, but also plays to my storyline, which is don't forget about the starting pitchers that have kind of carried Toronto to the point that they're at right now and given them the opportunity to during this win streak build on what is a above five hundred record rather than one that's below 500 if the starting pitching wasn't as good as it is they would be in a lot worse of a spot right now because the bats really weren't there earlier in the season over the series there wasn't a single starter who gave up more than three earned runs and you probably watch this game tonight and you think Manoa probably shouldn't even had an earned run uh but nonetheless all three of them Ryu Gosman uh and Manoa and of course Ryu got hurt And maybe if he stayed in the game, he would have given up a little bit more, but four innings, whatever. Um, All of them pitched really well. Uh, And and you kind of can't forget about how well the starting pitchers have been doing, because I know it obviously it's a lot of fun to go out and watch guys hit homers, but I love watching pitchers dominate. And the Blue Jays have a lot of guys who are just a lot of fun to watch uh, when they're just on their game. So the, the starting pitching has been a lot for me in this series. 
They were great. And, and like you said, Manoa, if Matt Chapman decides to throw to first instead of trying to go the short way to second, Manoa goes eight innings tonight. Uh, shut up. And, and that would have been incredible. And, and he still was incredible. And and it was like Kevin Gosman's down start, and he went five innings and allowed three earned runs. So that's the exciting thing about this team. The difference from last year is that the pitching is better, and now that the offense is there, they're really starting to do well. And one of the guys that propelled the offense is my series MVP. Welcome back to being yourself, to Oscar Hernandez. And we are so glad to have you. What a series he had at the end of the Angels series where he still was riding a four game hit streak. His OPS was 501. At the end of this series, he has bumped that up a full 141 points to a still not where we needed to be, but much more respectable 641 OPS, which is just below league average. Teoscar in this series had multiple hits in every game, had an extra base hit in every game, and ends with four doubles, a single, and a homer. It, when Vladdy hit a double in this game and then Teoscar hit a homer right after, it was like, okay, this offense is fine. The big boys are back. And I'm so excited to see how many future series MVPs go to Vladdy because Teoscar, now on a seven-game hit streak, is really starting to make pitchers a little bit nervous that the back-to-back -back Silver Slugger is back at it again. Yeah. Uh, Teoscar, I think he, I mean, two-time Silver Slugger the last couple of seasons, we all know he can hit the ball really well, but such a fun player when he's playing well. Like He plays the game with such emotion that it's so hard not to like him. Even if you're not a Blue Jays fan, I feel like it's just so easy to love Teoscar Hernandez. And when he's playing well, it's just hard to deny how exciting he is to watch playing the sport. So it is lovely to have him back, Ben. I think that it's a great person to name as your MVP. I'm going to name another fun baseball player that the Blue Jays have on their roster, a guy they traded for just before the season started. We call him Noodles on this podcast, and that's Rymel Tapia. Uh, the Rymel Tapia haters have gone into hibernation, uh, and rightfully so because Tapia has shut him up left, right, and center. The man is just on a mission to prove everybody wrong, and I love it. I absolutely love it. The Blue Jays tweeted about it that they, um, from their official account uh, about the haters because they notice our community, and they're saying, wow, I mean, people are hating on our guy Noodles, uh, and it's just it's unjust. Uh, this guy in the series, his numbers aren't out of this world, but if you watched it, you'll know how impressive he was. He was three for six in the series, two runs scored, and those runs uh, are a lot due to his speed and his, his apt base running. The guy can move like nobody else, uh, and you saw that a lot during this series. So I expect Rymel to, to keep on doing what he's doing. Uh, and he was great against the Angels, too. So he's really just building on something that's been coming for two straight series now and has uh, really helped the Jays to this streak. It, it's massive to have him on the base paths because he's so fast and he creates so much havoc with his speed. And at the same time, he's a contact hitter. And him finally hitting for contact is exactly what the Jays need. They know he's not going to hit homers, but the more he's getting on base, the better. I think coming up, you know, we got a lot of interesting stuff coming up for the deadline. And one of the topics that we may have gone the other way on a couple weeks ago, which outfielder do they keep if they're going to trade for someone and which do they send down? I think probably when they were both hitting poorly, it would have swung Zimmer's way. I'll be really interested a week or two from now uh, how we talk about Rymel Tapia and his future on this team. Because like you said, the haters are hiding and it looks a lot more now like Tapia could be an important piece of the team going into the final three thirds or, or sorry, the final three quarters or two thirds of the season. Yeah. I don't know how, how pro machine you can really be at this point. Well, Tapia got a new job heading into this season with the blue Jays. Maybe you're trying to get a new job, Mr. Or Mrs. Listener uh, with LinkedIn, our pals at LinkedIn, might have you covered with spring in the air at the time of renewal and growth personally and professionally as your small business grows linkedin jobs are here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free and create a job and post in minutes on linkedin jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people not 809 million people 810 plus million 
people. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. And simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to have an interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. And did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? I'm one of them. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on MLB. That's locked on or that's LinkedIn.com slash locked on MLB to post your free job. Terms and conditions apply. Bones, you know why I like Locked On Syracuse host Brad Klein so much? Why is that? Because he asks asks beautiful, incredible, well thought out questions, and we have some questions and a favor to ask you. We've that put together a survey half. so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast, like Brad Syracuse podcast even better this is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about locked on podcast go to lockedonpodcast.com slash survey right now to get started it won't take very long and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 100 Ticketmaster gift cards to take our audience survey go to lockedonpodcast.com slash survey thanks for your help all right, 20-game period here, Bones. Uh, I'm excited to go over this. It feels like forever ago when we set this. Uh, it was I was back in Syracuse for graduation. Uh, we were still just an audio podcast. It was a long time ago. Uh, and also, the Blue Jays, at the point that we did it, they were just barely over 500. We had set this after the Jays had come off losing three of four to Cleveland. And we were really worried about the trajectory. So we went through the series at New York, at Tampa, home to Seattle, home to Cincinnati, at St. Louis, at Los Angeles, but we mean in Anaheim, and home to Chicago. Do you remember there was one number that I said I think they will get? You said that's the number they need to get, but you weren't sure they were going to get it wins-wise. Do you remember what that number was out of 20? 13 wins? 13 would be correct. And – When this whole thing started, it did not start well. They got swept in the two-gamer by the Yankees, and then they lost two out of three to the Rays. So they went one and four in their first five, and we were asking them to go 13 and seven overall, which meant that they were going to have to go 12 and three in the next 15 games. So they went 12 and three in the next 15 (laughs) games after that. We, We predicted stuff like they would take one off the Yankees. They didn't. We predicted, which they should have in that 6-5 game, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, We predicted, I think we only predicted one win over Tampa, so that's not that bad. We thought they would sweep Cincinnati. No. Where they made up wins, though, was just winning, as everyone very well knows, the final eight games. So, 13 wins later, how are you feeling? What I'm feeling is that's insane. Like, that's honestly kind of bonkers. That they did it, they did exactly what we said they were going to do, which is kind of huge for us. But also, like they did it not at all how we thought we were going to do. Completely different. Like didn't sweep Cincinnati and swept the Angels and White Sox. (laughs) I think we also said like that Angels team is going to be tough to beat. They're playing hot right now, and they were playing hot. Uh, Yeah. But then they arguably were tough to beat, but they did it. Um, Three one-run games in that series. Uh, Yeah, I mean. I can't say that I predicted exactly how they did it, but it is cool to say that we did predict what they would do. (laughs) It's Um, like, we're not going to hit on that many of those, you know, predicting a 20 game win loss. I think we should not do that for the rest of the year. We should never do that. Wait a little bit because we'll be (laughs) way off the next time. (laughs) Our conversion Uh, rate's a hundred percent right now. Um, Yeah. I mean, it's fantastic because I remember when we recorded that and I was talking about, you made the point that like I had said in that podcast that they needed to do that. Like it it, they were at a point in the season, like you said, coming off of three out of four losses in Cleveland where they were not in a great spot. They had a mediocre record. um, 
and they needed to put themselves uh, in, in a spot to, to, to compete with the top teams in the AL East because this was also a time where the Yankees were still winning baseball games. So they had to put themselves in a position to be able to contend with that team, and we knew that it had to be at least 13 wins because they had to put themselves in a spot where they were 10 or so games above 500, and that's exactly what they ended up doing. Now, I don't want to nitpick the stretch because it's pretty good. They end up going, you know, six games over 500 through the last 20, where they only went four games over 500 through the first 30. But they did lose four out of their seven games to divisional opponents. How do you feel about that? No, well, I will say um, it does. I mean, it was a two game series with the Yankees, but it does hurt the argument of the Yankees play an easy schedule. That's why they're good. The Blue Jays play a hard schedule. That's why they're not as good argument because the Yankees said, okay, we'll play you and then beat them. Um, So that doesn't help that argument at all. And then the Rays, yeah, the Rays are good, man. I don't have to tell you, like the Rays are good. And and this is, this is the only division in baseball where all four teams have plus run differentials. Or all four teams. I'm just totally excited. Four out of five. Just four out of five. J- yeah, the Jays are positive now. They just went positive. Yeah. Uh, so they they're all positive now, um, except for the Orioles. Um, it's also the only division in baseball where there are four competitive teams. So the Red Sox are actually being competitive now. So it's a real. The Arizona Diamondbacks are so hurt by your statement that you just made. Sorry, the Arizona. D-back, you the don't D-backs were like, we're in it. <laughs> no, you're not. You're objectively not. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the Rays are going to play good ball, and the Yankees are a really, really fun team this year that's going to win a lot of games. Um, but here's the other thing, is, is you also have to be able to beat the other teams around the league, and you have to be able to beat the teams that are as good or worse than you. And I think you could argue that the Angels coming into that series are about as good as the Blue Jays, even the White Sox, probably a little bit worse. Um And you have to be able to beat those teams if you're going to be a successful team in this league. And that's exactly what the Jays went out and did. So is it a negative that they lost their teams to their division rivals? Absolutely it is. But is it also a positive that they showed that they can go on a huge run like they did with seven straight games, uh, eight straight games if you count the Cardinals game, Uh, but seven straight games, including the two series? Like, yeah, that's a huge positive. Yeah, so I I feel kind of the same, like, I, I do like, you know, sometimes looking at the strength of schedule just because the Jays had a similar thing last year. But at the same time, even if the schedule lightens up for the Jays and doesn't, you know, lighten up for the Yankees, if the Yankees play 500 ball against the Jays for the rest of the year, they're going to beat them for the division because they've dominated them so far. Because it's the easiest way to separate yourself and make up games is that way. So and it's disappointing to get swept, I think. The, the one out of three yes. at the drop is not – the end of the world yes and the place that uh the tough schedule versus the easy schedule is going to come in is later down the line where the jays start to get some series in a row where they can build some kind of momentum uh when maybe they don't have any uh they can kind of play weaker teams series after series where you're going to look on the flip side and see the yankees playing uh, the Astros and then the Red Sox and then just gritty teams at one after the other because they've, you know, like we've continually said, they've played the easier teams, the weaker teams thus far. Um, so right now it's not as big as a deal, I, I think, but in July and August it will be. The Blue Jays from that stretch are now on a 97 win pace at 30 and 20. The only issue is that the Rays are on a 95 win pace and the Yankees are on a 114 win pace right now. So, I mean, who knows if that'll stick. But uh, that is a, a tough hill to climb over. But if you're looking to get some energy, maybe go hiking, climb some hills yourself, well, why not go for what we've all been asking for, built granola bars. They are here, and we want you to know about it. They come in three unbelievable flavors, chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, and white chocolate berry. Want to try all three flavors? Want to try all of them at once? Eat all three just like smushed together into a Built Bar sandwich? You can do that. You can get a mixed box at Built.com right now. Only 150 calories, 15 grams of protein, so multiply by three for the Built sandwich, and only four grams of sugar. Built granola bars 
will change your world. You can take them on the road. You can pack them as a healthy snack for your lunch, or you can just eat as a fun snack all the time. And they're made with collagen protein, by the way, with your which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. If you want some built granola bars, go to built.com. Use our promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Nice. I can't hear you, big guy. Uh, I was I was being courteous towards you. I was just saying, uh, I was showing off my baseball cards while you were doing that. Very nice. Um, I tried to do that yesterday and whiffed. We'll see if I have to do that. <laughs> I got one more for the end. Um, all right. It is prospect roundup time, a exciting weekly thing that Ben and I have done for a few weeks now. I think, what is this, week like five? Uh, five, five, five. Week five. Uh, of the prospect roundup. It is where Ben and I pick three prospects each. At least one of them has to be outside the top 30. Uh, did I check this week? No, but I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm pretty sure that these guys, I, I know uh, one of them is because I've kind of come to know the, the system at this point. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume at least one of these guys ain't. Oh yeah, the, correct. The me. fringe guy, the fringe guy for you is not a top thirty guy. The guy yeah, whose last name starts with it. an N. But yeah, we'll, I guess we don't have to hide it. Do you want to go first or me? Yeah, I'm gonna go first. <laughs> okay. I love this podcast. Um, <laughs> all right, my first guy is Samad Taylor. Samad uh, plays second base. He plays left field. He plays third base. Um, he's from California. He's got earrings. He's really cool. Like he's just got like, this picture. You go look at his baseball reference picture and be like, oh, that guy's that guy's pretty cool. Um, and he just goes out and he hits tanks and he drives in runs and he's awesome. Uh, he's in AAA in Buffalo and, and in May he really hit well. Uh, a two ninety eight batting average. Uh, an on-base percentage of nearly 350. The slugging numbers could have been a little bit higher. He only a 405 slugging, which comes out to a 749 OPS. But he drove in 18 runs in the month of May, 25 hits and 23 games. Uh, were a lot of those singles? Almost all of them, sure. But at this point, I think what you should be looking at for a guy who is 23 years old is guys in the in the farm especially a guy in triple a who can consistently put bat on ball and get on base uh that's going to be hugely important and really really valuable if you can have a 350 on base percentage in triple a and you're only 23 i'll take that yeah and he's an infielder outfielder so that's an enticing guy if you want to call him up he's the number 16 prospect for the blue jays by the way on the top 30 uh, i'm gonna flip it over to another top 30 guy this guy's not quite in triple a he's in double a right now with new hampshire sixth round pick in 2021 and the number 26 prospect for the blue jays hayden younger right-handed pitcher who's a starting pitcher who they haven't let go very deep into games but he's stretching it out a little bit and he's starting to pitch really well after back-to-back -back appearances on may 15th and may 21st where he allowed six earned runs in six innings in his last seven innings of work he's only allowed two hits and one home and one earned run he just got hit for a solo shot that's it he's limiting opponents this year to a disgusting cumulative batting average of 188 the guy's just missing bats his main issue is homers which is the case for a lot of guys he's given up more than half of his runs with the long ball but if that's something he can refine for uh you know a college guy from missouri state who's got a little bit a seizing on him to be doing this well at just 21 years old he's someone who I, I probably don't think this year but maybe next year he could be fighting to be a bullpen guy or if they really want to project him out as a starter then you think about, you know, two, three years down the road, if this guy's still doing it, he's already at the double A level, which for many is one call away from the majors. Yeah, uh, I, I love looking at pitchers here. You'll know that uh, if you've been watching, if you've been, excuse me, watching or listening uh, to this podcast for a long time, you know, and I've brought up Jeremy Beasley for a while. So it is very exciting for me that he finally got called up he's going to get his chance uh so i i love the young arms especially the guys who are just mowing down minor leaguers who just show up to work every day and just do their job and 
just throw gas. I think it's awesome. Um, to a guy who does that for me, we're going to go to Vancouver, the little Canadians over there on the west side of Canada. Um, how about a guy who's been on this program in terms of his name, not his face? Uh, Sam Maybe Roberts. That would be sick if we could get Sam Roberts <laughs> on this program, dude. That would be awesome. All right, that's our new goal. Get Sam I'll Roberts. DM him. I'll DM, All right, him DM Sam that. Roberts right now as we speak. <laughs> uh, Sam has been on. His name has been featured uh, on this a couple of times because the dude is gnarly. Um, in his last start, what is that, two days ago now? Uh May 31st, he went four and two thirds, seven K's, zero earned. I mean, the dude is just stupid good. He's in his last five starts, zero earned runs. I mean, he's just going out there and being a dog. Um, he is pretty high in terms of his ranking seventh right now uh, in the Jays prospect ranking on MLB.com. He's really good. And this is a guy that is going to be a Toronto Blue Jay and a starting pitcher. Uh, very soon in terms of ETA, I'd say like probably two years. Um, he's still young, high A ball, uh, but I love him. I mean, he's fantastic. He just goes out there and he strikes guys out and it's cool. And he doesn't allow runs. What else could you ask for? Sam Roberts, my guy. The Dutchman. Uh, he doesn't have DMs open on Twitter, but I follow yeah, him. So maybe he does. <laughs> if, if he doesn't follow us back, maybe we'll tweet at him. But for now... I've, your uh, minor I've league him. baseball like tentacles. Right? <laughs> oh <enough>. no, sir! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's push it forward. I'm going back to Double A. Uh, I have a batter, uh, which I I also lean more heavily on the pitcher side usually. But uh, there's one guy who I oh, I've been pretty impressed with, uh, LJ Tally, 25 year old. So he is a little bit on the older edge for a Double A guy out of the University of Georgia. Was the J seventh round pick in 2019. He's a middle infielder who started the year at Buffalo and was actually hitting really well for the Bisons. He was a 310 batter for Buffalo in 21 games. But then I think just from shuffling around from some guys going up to the majors, then coming back down and some major league guys getting healthy, he got pushed down to New Hampshire and just didn't really get off to a great start. And you could see how that would be weird for a guy who's hitting well at AAA. Maybe it shakes your confidence a little because you're like, what more could I have been doing? I'm hitting 310 at triple. I get pushed down. And now he's really starting to find it again. May 27th and May 28th, back-to-back -back games against Akron. He goes yard. Uh, five hits in the last five games. His most recent game reached three times and knocked in a run. He's a big uh, on base percentage has a high separation from batting average, 122 point separation. That's what I like to see. I love guys who can walk a lot. He's shown the contact skills at Buffalo. Uh, I'm looking at him truthfully, honestly, as maybe a trade piece because they do have a lot up the middle. Uh, but he's someone who, if you can get him hot again and you can say to a team, look, he hit well in triple A just because of roster space. We moved him down to double A. He hit well in double A. I think someone is going to take this guy and give him a shot uh, like, a you know, one of the teams that's like, you know, the Pirates or the Cubs or someone who might be interested in giving some guys some major league time a little bit later in this year where the Blue Jays have less space up the middle in the majors right now. Right as you said his name, LJ Talley, I just thought of LJ Hose. You remember LJ Hose? Yeah, I it remember LJ. It was a short time it will be outfielder. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think you're right, though. Talley, a guy who... A little bit older at 25, who's playing well, could easily be a decent trade piece. And we see that all the time in baseball where uh, a guy who gets hot in the minors who may be a little bit older uh, is used as a trade piece. So I can totally see that. And I think that's a good take from you, Ben. Thank um, you. My last guy is Rainer Nunez. He's a corner infielder, plays first and third, 6'3", 180. Born on December 4th, 2000. That makes him 21 years old from the DR. He is in Dunedin currently. Uh, and in the month of May, the dude hit the cover off the ball. 297 average in 24 games. He had 30 hits, six homers, 22 RBI. Uh, and an 842 OPS is pretty darn good. His on-base percentage is a little lower than you like to see. Only two walks in that time. Uh, but the guy, he's hitting very, very well. Uh, and like I said, if you have a guy who 
can play both sides of the infield, and he's also a little bit athletic, kind of a stringy guy. Uh, I think that's pretty valuable, and just another name to keep your eye on uh, going forward. Of course, just 21 years old down in Dunedin, but going to work, and he's he's hitting really, really well, and not necessarily a guy who's going to take Vladdy's spot anytime soon, obviously, but another guy that you could think of, and when you're thinking about potential trades, a name you could throw into those uh, conversations because the Jays all of a sudden have a lot of guys in the minors who are starting to look uh, pretty enticing and for other teams and for potential trades at the deadline. If you're looking at relievers or you're looking at another outfielder or a bench guy, these are the names that you're, you're probably going to see moving around. So Rainer Nunez, another really solid player who uh, probably won't see in Toronto anytime soon, but uh, we might on another team one day. Well, here's another guy in Dunedin that if he ends up being a trade piece, I'll be very sad. Tying Sam Roberts today, who was also making his third appearance. The third appearance in five weeks on Prospect Roundup, uh, twice by me, once by you, which is the flip from Roberts, who's twice by you and once by me. Dion Santos I love just Dian. can't can't stop striking guys out and just will not give us a reason to take him off of this list. He has honestly one of his worst outings in the last month in his last one against the St. Lucie Mets only strikes out nine and gives up one run in four and two thirds. Just a, just a weak outing by Dahi on standards as he continues to mow down anyone in front of him. He is so much fun and it really capped off just a ridiculous month of May 21 and two thirds innings. Two earned runs, five hits in 21 and two-thirds innings, and he struck out 43 batters in that stretch, almost to an inning. They have to promote him. I don't care that he's 19. They have to promote him. His last – He's too good. Look at it, he's too good. His last five outings, four innings pitched, nine Ks. Four innings pitched, seven Ks. Four innings pitched, 10 Ks. Five innings pitched, eight Ks. Four and two-thirds innings pitched, nine Ks. He doesn't use the defense. He's mean to the defense. He doesn't like the defense. He doesn't care about the defense. He just strikes everyone out. He's maybe my favorite prospect in the system. <laughs> He's still only 19 years old. I really want to see him get the move up to high A Vancouver, and who knows, maybe even find himself on the New Hampshire roster by the end of the year because – he seems like a guy where you could plug him into the bullpen at a really young age and see what happens. So many good arms, man. There's Dahian, oh, Sam, so many. Ricky Tiedemann. There are so many good arms in the Jays system right now. Uh, well, that's it for us. Thanks for making Lockdown Blue Jays your first listen today. Now, go make your second listen to the Lockdown MLB podcast. Our close personal friend and MLB expert, PFS, Sully, Paul Francis Sullivan, brings humor. He brings passion. And guess what he brings? A unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Lockdown MLB. On the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast, Ben and I will be back um, on Monday to discuss whatever happens over the weekend, uh, and we're excited to be back. So uh, we'll see you then. Peace and love. <laughs>